Hi, I am Nalele Hua Nalwai, and I am here to talk about food sovereignty today and culture of Hawaii, the culture of Hawaii, with our food sovereignty. With my father here, Dr. Solomon Duke Kelly Iokalani Nalwai, who is a Kalo expert and a Laau Lapaau Kahuna medicine plant doctor. So he's a PhD, MD, and he also does plant medicines, uh, expert with plant medicines and um, growing his own kalo. So yesterday we went out to do some lo'i work. And this is Dr. Shalomen Du Kelly Iokalani Nalua'i, my father. Aloha. Aloha. Even at an early age, at about five or six years old, uh, we had lois at Haiku Valley in Kanele. So as a young child, my brother used to take us to the taro patch and work in the loi. And uh, of course we'd harvest, she'd teach us all the different things about raising taro harvesting taro and, and replanting taro and how to cut the huli and replant. And um, so we would do that and bring the taro home. She would cook it. And kind of like the things we, we did just uh, yesterday. Let's try to do one. Yeah, do. one that okay. Good. Oh, we got it. Good job. Okay. Hold my hand. It's too much tail. The tail is going to get rotten. Cook it and then uh, she prepared. Uh, my father would pound the poi, and um, what we also had in, in the 30s and 40s, we never had box cereal, so our breakfast cereal was always either taro with milk and honey or milk and brown sugar, or sweet potato, or ulu with milk and brown sugar. That was our breakfast. So we. Um, Kind of lived off the land a, a lot. Uh, started to harvest uh, taro, and uh, then then they have to clean it and take all the roots out and push the roots back in the mud for uh, fertilizer. Okay. You pull all the wheat uh, roots out and stick it right back in the same hole. Yeah. Can someone go in with me? Go on. Yeah. Come. Yeah. Then they have to clean it and then. Well, the first thing I do is I cut the leaves because I bring the leaves on and make luau stew. And then uh, they pull the, the taro, uh, pull up all the roots and stick it down, and uh, then they have to clean it. And then after it's clean, then they have to cut the huli and then replant it. And uh, so they were doing that yesterday. Before. overnight uh, it, it, just steaming it and then this morning we were uh, peeling the taro and my father was also known uh, for uh, doing kalua pig so as a young boy we always had to help him kalua pig whenever any family had uh, a celebration whether it's a wedding or a birthday or a graduation or any kind of celebration anniversary they always asked my father to uh, do the kalua pig. And so we learned how to do the kalua pig. And my father would uh, 
bring the pig home live. But then before he killed the pig, he would shave the neck and, and look for the uh, jugular vein. And then he would kill the pig and collect all the blood from the vein and uh, keep it in a pot. And as we were cleaning the pig, shaving it and everything, you know, then he would gut it. So all the boys would have to uh, help my father with the pig. He'd give us the, the long intestines of the cruel pig, and we'd have to get a stick and turn it inside out and clean it and wash it. And he'd use that to make loco. I don't know if people know what loco is today, but loco is a pig gut cut into pieces. And it's cooked with uh, the pig blood and vinegar. And he, he always said, you know, the Kalua pig is for the luau, for the guests and everything, but the loco is for the workers. It was reserved for the workers. Uh, so that's how I learned how to do Kalua pig. And when we did uh, Lau Lau or Kulolo or Haupia, we all did it as a family. And everybody would sit around and I also would take them out in the mountains hiking and show them how to uh, how to find water and food in the mountain, and um, how, to do, how to survive in the mountain. That was years ago, but you know, I'm, I'm, even though I'm a retired surgeon, I, I, I did uh, surgery and family medicine. Even though I'm a retired surgeon, I still go back to my roots and do stuff that I grew up doing. It used to be surgical hands, but now it's terapeutic hands. Son! Oh, I don't know. 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 I Mm -hmm. Spend the summers here and to get to know family and to see kind of what grandpa was doing in his backyard with the farming. I remember as a little girl seeing pictures of my cousins with the big watermelon and all that and all the kalo and I thought it was so exciting because in Utah like we grew garden and we had fruit trees and everything but it wasn't a tropical environment. Hi! And then, so I became interested in farming in that respect. And then I went to school, college, here at U, uh, UH, University of Hawaii, going to study oceanography, but then I changed my mind and went back to school in Utah, um, going into outdoor recreation management, where I also learned about sustainability and land management and protecting the land and why it's important um, for future generations to be able to have access to not only public lands but to have their own private property to grow their own food. You can pound and grind together. Basically, that's it. You just keep going until it's smooth. There is a uh, sustainability through three generations and beyond, actually, generations before and generations to come. Um, so, my goal is to stay within my education, my academia, a as a like a life coach and lead the young ones into the sustainable programs. And you know, they, nowadays you can't get jobs without a college degree. So it's a good thing I'm going through college so I can guide them 
the younger ones through the college process. How do we bring kupuna to mo'opuna, the grandparent to the grandchild? The, the modern society has separated this bond and created a gap between them. So I think our job is, our generation is to bring that gap closer and close the gap a little and bring the children back to earth and away from technology. The Queen Lily O'Colony's favorite dish is the luau stew. And um, so the leaves, we eat the same thing. The leaves <laughs> out of this luau stew is, and you can't see it now, but it's huge and thick. It's not like at the stores. <laughs> you can hardly feel the leaf, but this one is just like leaf. You can see the leaf and it tastes like leaf. Made with his hands, all his hands. So this is leads us into our mo'opuna.